Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to build a better log rolling mousetrap. Now there are dozens of how-to videos on building uh, log rolling mousetraps on the internet. We mixed it up a little bit and changed it a little bit. The criteria for this build was we wanted it to be easy and inexpensive to build. We wanted the trap to be um, capable of catching multiple mice without resetting it. And I didn't want to have to dedicate a bucket to the trap. So this trap can move from bucket to bucket. It starts with just three two by threes, all cut five inches long. On one of them, we're gonna put a quarter inch hole about a quarter inch from one end. And then I'm also gonna drill some um, one eighth inch holes just for the screws. Uh, this way I don't split the wood. We're also going to use an old paint roller. I'm going to use this as the spindle. So I'm going to start the process. I'm going to cut off a, a section of this paint roller. Now I'm just going to use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, but you could do this with a uh, with a hacksaw. Or even if you just had a grinder, you could just you know cut it on the corner of a grinder if you wanted. But you want to end up with uh, just that straight piece sticking down off of the paint roller. That's going to get inserted into the quarter inch hole drilled into one of the two by threes. This is a very simple build. One of the other two by threes, we're gonna to have to create a notch for that upright. So I'm just gonna mark the location of the upright. You know, basically one side, the other side, the top, it gives me left, right, and, and top. And then I'm gonna also mark on the 2x3 basically the depth of which that notch is going to have to be. Now this is this is not skilled carpentry work. work. Um, you could create this notch any way you like. You could just cut two uh, saw marks and then chisel out the inside. It doesn't have to be pretty. All you have to do is make room uh, for that shaft. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that same angle grinder that I had with a flap sanding wheel. I'm just going to go back and forth a couple of times until I have a ground a groove that's deep enough. Once the groove is cut, I'm just going to test that piece, make sure that it's deep enough. In this case, there was just a little piece of, of wood that was still touching. I'm just going to grind it a little bit more. And basically, all I'm doing is making sure that that uh, 2x4 can be flush with the front of the top 2x4. So this assembly is going to get screwed together, but before we do that, I'm going to add a little bit of two-part epoxy. I'm going to add some onto the shaft from the paint roller that gets inserted onto the top 2x3, uh, rather. I think I said 2x4 before. It's 2x3s. Um, and then I'm also going to put a little of that two-part epoxy inside the groove. Don't get any on the surface of the 2x3. Uh, I don't want you to glue uh, the paint roller so that it doesn't spin. Uh, we really just want to hold the shaft from the paint roller in position. So a little two-part epoxy into the groove. And then I'm going to start to assemble and, and screw that top 2x3 onto the grooved front 2x3. And you could do this with almost any size wood. I mean, if you wanted to do it out of two by fours, you certainly could. The measurements on the on the length are not critical. I mean, you can make them six inches or seven inches long, uh, but you know, five inches seems to work pretty well. I'm gonna put uh, one screw in through one of those pre-drilled eighth inch holes. And then I'm gonna set this assembly aside and let it dry. I'm gonna set it aside with the paint roller facing up. And this way, that epoxy is not going to drip out and down uh, the wood onto that paint roller, preventing it from spinning. And when the epoxy dries, this is basically what you end up with. You end up with a, a, a top and front 2x3 assembly with the spinning paint roller. 
the only thing we've got to add now is the back piece or the back piece of two by three and that just is going to allow this to, to wedge onto any bucket i'm just going to mark the location if you don't want to put it in position and mark the location you can just leave a three-eighths uh, space in between the two three uh the two two by threes and then again through uh, pre-drilled holes you want to screw that assembly together you definitely want to uh, pre-drill the holes on these you don't you don't want to split these two by threes we are screwing them pretty close to the edge and they they have a tendency of splitting unless you unless you pre-drill the holes assembly is basically done. I cut a short piece of inch and a half PVC. That's going to slide right over the paint roller. Just make sure you don't push it on too far and then it's still able to spin. And then this is going to just wedge right onto any bucket. You're going to use any scrap of wood as a ramp to allow the mice to come up onto that uh, top two by three. We're gonna bait it with, uh, usually with peanut butter, I, I find works very nicely. And as soon as the mouse jumps down onto that, uh, that spinning PVC, it's gonna fall into the bucket. I did drill some partial holes about halfway out on the PVC, and I'm gonna load those up with peanut butter. Uh, those holes will just hold that peanut butter a little bit better than just putting it on the smooth surface. I also added about two inches of water to the bottom of the bucket. Basically what happens, the mouse will come up the ramp out onto the PVC in order to get the peanut butter. The PVC will spin, he will, or well, the mouse will fall uh, into the bucket and, and drown. Um, if you don't want to kill the mice, you could put straw on the bottom of the bucket. Um, if you don't put anything on the bottom of the bucket, the mice can probably jump out of a bucket. But that's it. A very easy, inexpensive mousetrap that repeats. You can catch multiple mice per evening with the same uh, trap without having to reset it. Uh, and it, you don't need a dedicated bucket. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And by all means, check out our website, DIYEasyCrafts.com, and see our other DIY projects. Thank you very much.